Hello and welcome to the Wiltshire Caravans Handling video for the 2017 Hyundai Commodore. Just take you around the outside to start with the Hyundai 2 and we'll start at the back. Okay, so first things first, you see the ground handles, obviously the large door into the bedroom. There's the highlight brake light, There's grab handles. Uh, the light clusters themselves uh, for the indicators, reversing lights, brake lights and running lights. Obviously you don't have to worry about the uh, corner settings because this being a Buccaneer has the self-leveling. Okay, so another window into the bedroom. But there we are on the offside, you've got the waste pipe outlet, so therefore the, uh, your grey waste is removed from the sink. Uh, the two sinks, bathroom and kitchen, uh, from the shower. Uh, comes, uh, comes out using the force of gravity. Right, okay, I have unlocked these um, lockers, but this is where the toilet cartridge or cassette is. Okay, it's the standard set cassette. For the pink rinse, the rinse comes directly from your water feed. Okay, so to any of you who've seen my these videos, so just lift the handle and remove, just slide it towards you, do not lift, just slide towards you. Uh, telescopic handle, it comes on wheels, so you can take that to wherever the uh, area is, the waste area. Okay, so you would undo this and keep it somewhere safe. Uh, then press this button up your tip just to uh, release all the gas and everything and everything will flow out quite horribly. Then you'll want to rinse out. So, pull the slide back, open that, uh, that top there, and uh, rinse out using the hose pipe that's usually available. You just see a little float in there. Now that little float uh, uh, just allows, tells us when the, uh, the cassette is full. There's a light in the, uh, in the, by the toilet that shows you when it's full. Okay, when uh, putting it all back together again, after you've rinsed out, close the flap, that goes back in. In that lid, there's uh, some measuring uh, marks, just to say what blue fluid is required. So have a look at the fluid that you're using uh, to see how much you need to put into the cassette and how diluted it needs to be. Okay, might have been the Buccaneer uh, 2017 twin axle. As you see, this one's been fitted with uh, the Evolution, Power Touch Evolution automatic engaged movers. Now, those, uh, there's a separate video for that. Uh, so, that would be forwarded on if you have the movers. Okay, so open in this uh, cabinet here, it is just an empty cabinet. Okay, so you can keep like, the most dirty boots. Um, I know someone who used to kept scuba gear, scuba gear in there, but uh, it's entirely up to you. It's just a free cabinet. Okay, so now we have come to the battery uh, battery locker. I do need the keys for that. Over here, obviously, strangely, in a battery locker is a battery. Right, okay, and you've also got the uh, that's where your electric hookup is, and this is where the motor mover is. Uh, the motor well, basically, this is where the power isolator is. So uh, the little red key you get goes in there but again that's a different video altogether. Um, you can just about see in there there's a 12 volt socket in there and an external TV point in there as well. Okay so moving along we have got the outside shower point. Now uh, yes it's an outside shower suggest it's for boots and dogs uh, only because it's cold water only and I'm saying, uh, unless that's what you folks about it's entirely up to you but then uh, the water system itself so you you've got a direct feed with this one as well however if you're using the aqua roll the whale pump uh, just literally slides in there clip that down and you're almost ready to go this end goes into your Aperol, that bit goes over the end, just to stop any detritus getting into your fresh water. Um, as you can see, it's got a handy little clip to keep that up, so if you are using an Aperol, uh, the pump itself doesn't drag in the dirt. Very useful. You also see on here there's an, an external service light, like an awning light on the wrong side. 
Right, that exhaust area there, that is for the Alde heating system. If you're using gas, um, that's the exhaust system on it. Okay, just moving on to the front. Usual Buccaneer three window um, configuration. You can see the sunroof there at the top as well. There's the gas locker. You've got a couple of uh, draft handles. Although I would suggest uh, being very careful when trying to move one of these about. I suppose the gas locker itself. I'd already unlocked the other one, so I can say for ease of use. So in here, the ability to take two gas bottles. There's your um, Chris registration number of this one. And obviously in here you can keep pretty much whatever you need to keep. We've got the water pump. That's uh, external shower and external pump as well, direct feed. And here you've also got the diamond wheel locks that come uh, with the van. Okay, this runs on the Alco chassis. No, it doesn't. This is the BPW. I'm a liar. It's the BPW chassis. VTEC chassis by BPW. Okay. Right, on to the near side. External gas barbecue. Please, whatever you do, do not ever uh, think about putting a gas barbecue uh, inside your awning. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't bear thinking about what could happen. Okay, I've got another locker. It goes uh, into the under the sofa. Out oh, here, you've also got a 230 volt socket and another TV point, so you can run that directly into your awning as required or if required. Okay, down at the bottom here near the door, that's the details of this van. So you've got the Chris registration number, the maximum plated weight. Uh, it's also got the tire size, tire pressure at 47 psi. And the wheel bolts need to be uh, torqued up to 130 newton meters. Oh, good! Here comes the rain. Anyway, <laughs> meanwhile, uh, there's the vents for the microwave, for the freezer, and for the fridge. And here is the under underbed storage, which is locked. And I didn't unlock that one because I wasn't going to look. storage you can see the uh, internal water tank and the storage space you've got on the bed you can access this from the bed by lifting that up but I'll show you that in a little while when we go inside very shortly okay we're just about to go inside but I thought I'd show you here is the alarm set so Set the alarm on your caravan. Top button. Press once. One beep means it's on. Two beeps means it's off. I'm going to go inside because it is raining. Okay, now underneath that, you've got what they call a panic alarm. Um, and what I think it's called that because it will make you panic if it goes off. You'll have it in your this, this in fob in your pocket at some stage, and you'll be kneeling down to do something or other, and you'll press the button. I will just put it on just to show you what it sounds like <whistles> believe me that will make you jump um, so anyway that's just a quick demonstration of that also whilst we're on the keys this bit ooh, this bit looks like a 1980s immobilizer up here every now and then that little unit which is the alarm reset will flash red i'll probably have to stand here for too long but once that flashes red once that's fine if it flashes red three times quickly it means you need to reset so you literally just put that in there push it in and that will reset the alarm okay right whilst we're inside now let's just have a quick wander around to uh, 
we'll see where everything is and how everything goes. I'll shut the door behind me. This is the whistle top store. <laughs> whistle stop door even. And uh, then we'll go around in a bit more detail very shortly. Okay, so when you come into the van, on your left hand side, this is where all the controls are. Now, let's turn everything off a minute. Okay, so everything off. All right, your master switch isn't that one, it's the third one in. So that's your master switch. And you might notice some of the smaller individual lights have come on. Then you've got the outside lights there. So that's your awning light, the gas locker light, and your service light on the uh, on the offside. And then main lights are in here. So I'll just show you that again, main lights. Doesn't necessarily look a lot here uh, in daylight, but I can assure you at night time that's uh, very bright indeed. Okay. Uh, this is for the water pump. I'll show you that in a minute. This display here shows you how many volts you've got available. Well, we're plugged into the mains, so I'm not surprised that's 13.4. And it also shows you the amount of water that is currently in your internal tank. As you can see, nothing. So uh, that's all good to go, good to travel. Okay, so the heating system is the Alde heating system. To turn that on, power up by pressing the power button. It'll come up with the proudly made in Sweden logo. And the first screen you'll see that it's on electricity and the current temperature is 21 degrees centigrade in here. Or Celsius, I should say. Shows my age saying centigrade. To get into the details, menu. All right, so at the top, we've got the, that's for the temperature, You whatever you want in the caravan. It goes down in half degree increments plus and minus to turn up and down. The second is the, uh, where the shower symbol is for the water heater. It's currently nothing on there. It's got the, the triangle, it's got nothing in it. So there's no heat in the water at the moment. Press plus and it will go halfway. That means uh, you'll get have enough uh, hot water for a washing, uh, washing up, etc. Uh, and even for one of you probably to have a shower, but just, just to be sure when you're about to have a shower, press again and that will heat the water up much more quickly, giving more power to it. No water in here at the moment, so I'm not going to do that. Right, the next one is the amount of power you want to use on the uh, on the heating and the hot water system. Currently it's off, well, so you press one, one kilowatt, or press plus I should say, for one kilowatt. Now one kilowatt will heat things up, but very, very slowly. On all UK sites, you should be able to use two kilowatts without any any problem. Um, it can go to three kilowatts, but that might trip out the pole uh, or, or the system or the electrical system in here. Um, particularly if you put on the microwave or a kettle, or you're using three kilowatts on the hot water and heating system. So my recommendation is to go to two. You can, should you wish to do so run on gas if you don't have an electric hookup. Okay, right, you also have some, this is the settings menu. Got lots of different settings. You can have uh, a nighttime setting, so currently off, but you could have uh, 18 degrees set between 2200 and 0600. Uh, to turn that on, click the off and it says on, it goes green. Then when you go back to the main, main screen, you can see A, so that's an activated function. Press A again, and it says activated function, oddly enough. Press on there, then you can see what the function is. And then just to turn it off, go back to the main screen and you'll see that A has now disappeared. Now there are a myriad of things you can do on here. Lots and lots of things, which is why we give you a book. So you can look at that until your heart's content. Okay. So, as I mentioned earlier, the water system. Okay, so to turn the water pump on, this button here. Now you've got three options, uh, well, three positions for the for the water button. You've got in the middle, so the zero. Now in the middle, uh, that's when you're taking your water supply from an aqua roll 
or a direct feed uh, hose pipe type scenario. Now, if you're using the direct feed, you do not need to turn the water pump on um, because you will get the pressure from the tap itself. Don't put the tap on full, just put it on, I don't know, half a turn. If you need a little bit more, turn a little bit more. But that, because uh, if you turn the pump on, it's fighting against itself and you'll probably have to recalibrate the whole system. So again, zero, or the, uh, the circle, that gives you the, uh, you're taking the water from the outside. Uh, you can use the internal tank by clicking it forward, so internal. But to use the internal tank, you need to fill it up by pressing external. Now, if you're using from your aqua roll, put, your pump, uh, put the pump in, press onto there, and that will fill up your internal tank, which is under the bed. I'll show you that in a little while. Um, then this will go up to, well, I <laughs> presume it will be 100% when it's full, and then you can use it on the internal. Okay. When it runs out, the pump will still remain running if you try to draw water out of it even though it's empty so it doesn't automatically switch over you would then need to either fill it back up again by going external or start using your aqua roll okay whilst we are talking about the water let's go under the uh, the right hand side sofa and under here you will see a yellow tap now that tap currently in the vertical position means that all water has been drained out of the uh, hot water tank <coughs> excuse me and all the taps okay to allow water to come in push it forward or bring it towards you to make sure it's in the horizontal position so here you've also got a gas isolator <coughs> for the heating system if you want to you know needed to turn it off but if you're using propane just turn it off at the bottle okay that yellow tap is very important particularly for winterizing your vehicle uh, you don't want any water in here uh, when it freezes or you know when it gets cold also here you've got the um, breaker switches and the fuse box so if you go turn something on it doesn't work this would be the first place to check. Okay. So far, so good. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. First cabinet. That's where the radio will be. Um, has a USB point and an auxiliary input. There's the solar panel charging unit. There's your antenna. So the TV and radio antenna, uh, when you get to site, look where everyone has got their aerial pointing, undo that, lift the shaft, point it in the right direction or the same direction as everyone else, then retune your TV. That's the booster up there, it's on at the moment. It's, you know, obviously I, I always leave that on, because it's to most, most people. Then you've got plenty of cupboard space, a couple of speakers at the front. You've also got a couple of speakers in the bedroom. So uh, you've got surround sound everywhere, just lots of cupboard space. Then we get to the kitchen area. So we've got uh, light switches. So that, that's the kitchen. Then you've got the uh, mood lighting down there. And under the under the tabletop or the worktop. Got this worktop area here. In the cupboard, little hidey holes. Actually, sorry, I didn't mention you've got two 230 volt sockets there. Obviously toaster, kettle, coffee maker, whatever you use. Um, cupboards above the sink. That's for your plates and your cups. Lots of cupboard space, and of course, drawer space, cutlery drawer. I'm sure you managed to fill those up quite handily. All right, then you've got come to the Thetford Aspire Two cooker. Okay, if you're going to use the gas burners and the, or the hob, glass top needs to be fully upright. 
obviously like I say three gas burners one electric hob uh, all activated down here we have a light in the oven and there's your, and there's your spark so uh, again I'm not going to teach you how to use a cooker but uh, it's where it all is you've got a full size grill nice size oven and in there we have the uh, you've got a separate gas isolator should you uh, be using gas you've also got the an ele the electric plug for the electric hob Turning around to the other side, got the microwave. There's the uh, switch for the microwave in the cabinet above. This microwave is the eco one. So you need to press that to make it go on. It will turn itself up after a while. Fridge freezer to turn the fridge freezer on. Power. So it's currently showing lighting up blue on the electric uh, plug. So we're currently running on electric, you can run it on gas. Beeping because we have no gas connected. You can also run on a car alternator. I'll just turn that back to electric now. With a car alternator, as long as the fridge and freezer are already cold, uh, that will maintain the temperature as long as you've got a 13 pin plug uh, on your, or 13 pin socket on your, uh, on your vehicle, on the tow bar. Uh, but it has to be cold, it will maintain the temperature, it will not get it cold from the start. Okay, but talking of temperatures, we can adjust the temperature of the fridge freezer. I recommend four because five you can sometimes freeze things that you don't want to do. Okay, also on this side, a little drawer, a little cupboard here. There's the gas isolator for the fridge, should you be running on gas. Cocktail cabinet, always very important to most uh, caravanners that I know. A uh, little drinks cabinet, not necessarily cocktails. Then you've got two, two 30 volt sockets, a 12 volt socket, and you've got uh, antenna points there for two of you to go on there, or a, in a bracket, should you wish to use the bracket. Just on the other side with the fridge, that's where your freestanding table is, and some little hidey holes there. <clears throat> okay, going through to the bathroom area. On the right hand side you've got the shower, nice big shower, uh, It's the shower screen is kept in place in a clip here, you do need to give it a little bit of a, a tug to pull it out, and then just uh, close the screen. <laughs> he says, there's another, we'll say another thing. When traveling, make sure you've clipped both clips back into place. Also got a bit of a towel rail, all very nice. And the light switches for the bathrooms, bathroom and shower are all there. Going into the toilet side, or the washroom. So you go inside, there's a mirror. I'll try to avoid my uh, reflection. Um, so sink, mixer tap, heated towel rail, that does get hot, so please be careful with that. Cabinets. Cabinets are plenty. So you've got no, no problems in space here. Okay, here's the toilet. This is the area where the uh, light comes on when the cassette is full. There's your rinse or your flush on there. So the toilet itself, okay, the, it does spin round. But when you've done whatever you need to do uh, to empty the content, empty into the cassette, push that across. But it's vital to bring that back once that's done, uh, because you will, if you're trying to get the cassette out and that's open, you may well break it because it gets stuck. And you'll think, oh, I'll give that a bit of a tug. If you don't, you will break it. Okay, so then into the bedroom. Light switch. So yes, bedroom to bedroom to bedroom. Curtains, blinds. All the blinds in here work the same way. 
So, uh, to bring down the black outlines, pull down, then for fly screens, pull down again, and you've just got a fly screen, so you can open the windows that way. Again, I'm not going to open the windows because it's raining, but standard clips, open the clips, push forward, and then tighten these up to keep the uh, windows open. Okay, and here you've got a plug, a couple of, uh, and a USB point, another mirror, cabinets, wardrobes, and this wardrobe over here. That's where your Alde heating fluid is. Uh, it's a mixture of glycol and water. Uh, you shouldn't ever have to worry about that, but I would say check when you arrive on site every time, just to make sure that the reservoir has enough. Um, if it, As long as it's a thumb thumb print or thumb length over the minimum, that's right. You don't want to get it to maximum because it would expand when uh, when it gets hot. Okay, so double bed, another water over there, individual lights, light switch there, cabinets, skylight, this skylight. Uh, as you can see, it's got the uh, clips, so undo the clips and then bring that down, but uh, I'm not gonna do that now because it's raining. Okay, under the bed, there's the water tank. If you do use your internal water tank on site and when you're going or before you leave there's a tap there <clears throat> so you need to open that well, it's currently closed now but open that to make sure all of the water empties out uh, as i said earlier more speakers up there from the radio Another, another door, so you can separate uh, yourself from the madding crowd. As it says there, uh, the retaining strap must be used to retain the sliding door when the vehicle is in transit. Absolutely can jump that sliding around. Don't want to cause any damage. All in all, I think that's pretty much it. I will quickly say about the, oh yes, the Omnivent. Now, the Omnivent works like an extractor fan, so I'm not going to open it. You twist this to open it up, turn the power on, and depending on you can have air as an extractor, or you can bring air in by pressing that, depending on how uh, how you want to use it. Again, this has a blackout blind on it, so be careful when releasing that because it will spring back and not uh, not go particularly well. These roof lights, okay, undo the clips. There's five of them. Now with these, uh, when you push up, some people push too vigorously. Uh, they don't break them, they just don't click into place. What you need to do with these, there's a bit of a technique where you push it up gently until you hear a click and then it will stop and it will stay where it is. Push again slowly and you're gonna hear another click and that'll be fine because that'll stay there. And then push it to the top and release for it to um, to come back down. Uh, when traveling, always make sure all your windows and uh, sunroofs are closed. Um, whilst we're still at the front again, uh, more power and a USB. Um, other than that, <clears throat> I think we're pretty much there. Okay, you've got a, a bin. <laughs> How exciting is that? Uh, it's just really to enjoy the caravan. Obviously, um, this video, you can play this as many times as you like. Um, but if you if there's something you don't understand, we will supply the manuals. Oh, I can show you how the bed works. All right, okay. If you need the bed at the front, just pull the slats out. Then uh, arrange the cushions as required. Okay. This little table here. <clears throat> yeah just enjoy so yeah any questions do give us a call 01373 752 100 um just enjoy your van thanks very much